Okay, welcome back. So we have just kind of done a deep dive into um, genetically modified organisms, the pros, the cons, you know, right? decreased pesticide use, increased herbicide use, um, but some really incredible ways to increase our food supply, um, decrease pests and overall, right? Mosquitoes um, just really are a vector for disease. So anything we can do to decrease mosquito populations, um, increase nutritional value um, in places that are malnourished. And now we're going to talk a little bit more about other um, biotechnology, right? So um, you know, genetically modifying our food supply and, you know, other organisms is one thing, but we have other things that we can do with biotechnology as well. Um, so that is what we're going to get into now. Let me get the right, the right slide for ya. Okay. So, um, you know, when we want to talk about how have we been using biotechnology to aid human health, um, and a lot of this comes down to our ability to put genes into bacteria. Um, so these can be genes for really anything, and because the genetic code is um, conserved and the exact same in all organisms from bacteria to plants to animals, um, we can take a human gene um, and we can put it in a bacteria and a bacteria will read that gene in the same way. Um, so this has been an incredible, like this discovery of DNA and then the ability to modify genes and move them into different organisms has really changed the landscape for um, medicine. Um, so if we want to go back into the 1980s um, for insulin, diabetics, before 1982, all insulin that diabetics used was actually harvested from livestock. So when they killed um, livestock for, you know, meat, they could get the insulin from them. And now they are able to have that insulin made by bacteria. So no cows need to die in order for somebody to get their insulin treatment. Um, human growth hormones um, that can get um, create that can be created in labs as well. Um, there are these other um, proteins, erythropoietins. Um, that are used for multiple diseases. Um, and now it can be produced in hamster ovaries. Hopefully um, they'll have that ability to transfer it over to bacteria soon as well. So these are ways that we're saving human lives and also in some cases saving animal lives um, by being able to genetically modify bacteria. Um, we can also diagnose and prevent vac um, diseases using biotechnology. So not only treating them, um, but genetic counseling, first of all, understanding people's genes, being able to do gene sequences can alert people to disease tendencies and, you know, maybe be aware of things, their um, diseases their children might inherit. But anybody here, and we're going to talk about this in lab, who maybe knows about the BRCA gene. This is a, a gene that is linked to increased risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, prostate cancer. Um, if you know that these diseases run in your families, you can get, um, you can have your gene sequence to look for these genes. And if you inherited it, you can get um, increased monitoring, right? You can get more scans to make sure um, that if you do get cancer, it can be caught earlier. Um, vaccines using messenger RNA, those mRNA vaccines that were first used for COVID, um, rather than, um, this was huge um, and they're faster to create. Um, this is why we had a COVID vaccine available, um, you know, in less than a year after COVID came out. Um, it's really incredible the way they could do that. And the reason is because before this, um, in order to create a vaccine, what they would do is you would actually get injected with the, the either the bacteria or the virus that you were trying to prevent. And they would weaken it in a way, so but it was still in your body so that your body could respond to it. Here, if we think about um, what messenger RNA is, right, it's taken from that DNA. It's just one little gene um, that that messenger RNA then gets translated into a protein, right? So for COVID, and I'm going to show you a slide, it's just that little spike protein that sticks out of um, the COVID virus. It's not the whole virus. It can't make you sick, but your body reacts to it as if you just got the virus. So that messenger RNA gets into your body. 
your body makes copies of it because it reads the messenger RNA just like it would read um, your own messenger RNA and starts making all these copies of the spike protein and then your body reacts to it. So if you got like felt a little icky the day after you got your vaccine, that's because your immune response is up, but you didn't actually get COVID. You couldn't get COVID. You don't have the whole virus. You just have that one little spike. Um, another thing that biotechnology has been used for is for gene therapy. And this is kind of incredible. Um, this, and I will, I think I've got something to show you about gene therapy. No. Um, so this is actually taking um, for diseases where there's maybe just one gene that has a mutation, something faulty in it that causes this disease. They're able to kind of knock out your immune system and maybe you, and some of your genes and then insert this um, fixed gene into you. And sometimes that's done by um, removing some of your genes and inserting it, or it could be um, put in almost like a vaccine and it gets taken up by your body. Um, and then your body starts making the the correct version of that gene. So this has actually been used now um, by either inserting a, a portion of a gene that was faulty or removing a portion that was um, that was causing problems. Um, it can, has been used for some leukemias, um, for sickle cell disease, for hemophilia, which is a bleeding disorder, muscular atrophy, um, some immune diseases. Um, it's really incredible. And this is just within the last six years, six, seven years. Um, so if we want to look at how gene therapy works, so this is ex vivo. So this is outside the body. Um, ex means outside. Um, so the cells can be collected from the body, either from your blood or your bone marrow. Those cells are then like grown in the lab and a new gene is added to them. So you can see here um, in part three here, right? This therapeutic gene is packaged into it and introduced into the patient's cells. And then those genes are returned into the patient. So they'll keep growing um, in the patient. And then the patient now has the correct version in their body. And they don't, if it's successful, they shouldn't need any more medication. It's this should cure their disease. And then just to go into mRNA vaccines and explain those a little bit, because I know when those first came out, there was a lot of fear around them. I'm sure some people still um, are a little fearful of them just because I think the average person doesn't know what messenger RNA is. Um, but messenger RNA, as you know, right, it's just that little piece of RNA that has been copied from DNA and that, that in transcription and then in translation, it's turned into a protein. So in order to make the messenger RNA vaccine, um, what they did was they first, they got the gene sequence of that spike protein on COVID and they made that, um, that little sequence in messenger RNA. Okay, so they took the DNA and they made messenger RNA from it. Now, you can't just put a bunch of RNA in your body. Um, it would get kind of dissolved. Um, so they put it in a lipid coating, very similar to um, the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane. Okay, so this can actually then float around um, in your muscles or your blood and get taken up by other cells. Okay, just like cells can, um, can take in um, through like endocytosis, other bits of things this is how this gets taken in so that rna sequence is put in this lipid for delivery and once it is injected into you um it makes its way into a cell so you can see here right it's kind of um glomming onto a cell through endocytosis it's getting inserted into the cell the cell is then going to read that bit of mrna just like it's going to read any other mrna that the cell makes and it's going to create a protein from it um, so that's translation. It's going to make that protein. And so in here, those are these little um, purple spikes that it's made. It's making that protein and then um, it leaves the cell and your body sees those spike proteins and makes antibodies. It says, oh, my God, there's an invader. And it starts to make those antibodies to fight it. And this way, your body has seen COVID um, without ever having actually been exposed to COVID. Um, it has a, um, a way to fight it. And this is probably why you know future waves of covid have been less severe because your body already has a little bit of an immune response from previous vaccines or if you've been sick before and it's not totally new and knocking you out 
Um, that mRNA, um, after it's used, um, it gets broken down by the body. It's not sticking around forever. Um, so once it's used in the cells, um, it gets completely broken down. So you don't have like all your old vaccines still floating around in your body. Those are gone. And that is it for chapter 10. So now hopefully you have a good understanding of you know, what we are using all of this biotechnology for now that we have this knowledge in ways that can help um, both the environment um, for like endangered species and also human health.